Okay, now let's talk about the soft palate or the vellum or the back of the roof of your mouth. So we've already talked about it a little bit. Um, the main purpose of the soft palate outside of singing is that it, well, it raises and lowers. So first, what, what does it do? Well, it, essentially it raises and lowers. And why does it do this? Well, generally when we swallow food and beverage, it raises so that that food and water doesn't get up into the nasal passage. And when we breathe through the nose, it lowers to actually allow the air to go from the nose into the lungs and back out. When we breathe through the mouth, it's, it's raised again. So we have this part of our instrument that lowers and raises the soft palate. When it raises, remember what we talked about is that it actually will make contact with the back of the throat as it's fully raised. And that's what closes and seals off the nasal packet passage. One other very important thing to know uh, when we, from the standpoint of singing and using our voice, is that not only does it raise and make contact here, but these muscles above it, there's muscles above it that kind of connect to the bone from the inside that raise and lower it. Those muscles can be further contracted such that even though it's already doing its job, closing off the nasal package passage, it can actually be raised even kind of higher and you can shape the, make it more concave, more rounded and firmer. So remember what we've talked about in these past uh, lessons is that these sound waves come flying up in this nice laser beam form and we want them to encounter nice, hard, firm surfaces so that they reflect forward and, and reflect in such a way that they also add harmonics and good qualities to the sound as opposed to having them absorbed. Uh, so the soft palate is very important because that's the second event, right? That's the second we make tone and then we shape, we make sound and we shape sound. So that place where the, the soft palate and the back of the throat come together, they're, they're really almost like a rounded amphitheater. So that sound hits it and gets directed, not like all, not like it hit a flat rectangular or square flat surface where it would come, maybe come at an angle and go off at an angle, but it's more of an amphitheater. So it's going to different waves are going to come off in all different directions. And what we want is that to be nice and firm and solid so we can get the best reflection as we possibly can. Okay, so why don't we, and we're going to move into four exercises that are designed to develop some awareness and the ability to isolate the soft palate and raise it and lower it. Okay, so the first exercise is our, our good friend, the yawn. So remember that when we yawn, we already know we use the yawn to help us feel what it's like to lower the larynx. We also use the yawn to help us open the false vocal folds, keep them retracted. Now we can also use the yawn to develop what it, a sensation or an awareness of the sensation of the soft palate being fully raised. So real quick, do a yawn and concentrate. And you can pause the video <laughs> as well. Uh, concentrate on feeling. You can actually feel the muscles kind of contracting and activating, and you can feel the top of the back of the roof of the mouth, the soft palate. You can feel it active, okay? So I'm gonna do one right now. So just notice how there's something back there. You feel something. You might not know what it is, but you definitely feel something. Do it a few times you feel something moving and coming together and just some kind of muscle firmness, okay? That's the soft palate raising and becoming active, okay? The second exercise is the same thing, but now you'll be able to see it. So grab any kind of flashlight that you have, like I have this little flashlight, uh, and go to a mirror. I'm not gonna do it here for you and I don't wanna gross you out with a close-up view of the back of my mouth, but standing in front of a mirror with a flashlight, shine the flashlight into your mouth and do the same thing we did just now on the yawn, but watch it. And what will happen is you will see 
the back of the soft palate raise and that little uvula, the little sandbag, punching bag hanging from the back, which is the end of the soft palate, you'll actually see it retract. If you do a nice strong yawn, you'll actually see it pull back and almost become invisible. You'll maybe see the, the tip of it, but it actually gets drawn back and you'll see the back of the throat begin to take on this really nice, firm, round shape. And it becomes nice and wide and big. So this is also when you hear open throat singing or open throat techniques, the yawn is a great way. The yawn is the best way of producing the open throat, except you can't sing and yawn at the same time. Uh, so in this second exercise, pause the video <laughs> and go to a mirror, put a flashlight in your mouth and yawn a few times and not only continue to try to feel the sensation of those muscles being active and, and being made more firm, but then also watch and see what happens in that because then you'll know that this is really what you're after is that nice, big, round, firm back of the throat so that the second event where we begin to shape the sound, where we redirect this laser beam of sound forward, uh, we want it nice and firm and, and well-shaped, okay? So now, the third, the third example, which does the same thing. So as I said before, when we swallow, the soft palate has to raise all the way to the back of the throat so that the food and drink don't go up into the nasal package passage. So just swallow a few times. I'm going to swallow here a couple of times so we can do it at the same time. And what you'll find is you're going to feel the same thing that you're feeling when you yawn. So let me do a, a couple here. Okay, so you feel that same activation and firmness and possibly you might be feeling the actual contact between the soft palate and the back of the throat. And it should feel very similar to the yawn because they're the same. Find what's common between those two activities and that's what you'll, you'll find is the feeling of the soft palate raising and locking into place. Okay, and now we're going to do one more exercise that's designed to do the same thing is to help you feel that awareness of the soft palate coming up okay and that is the a, a sucking exercise so what i want you to do on this exercise is just you can exhale most of the air make sure you're either half or near fully out of air then i want you to if you need to pinch your nose go ahead i can do this without pinching my nose. Mainly what I want to do is keep your mouth closed and try to breathe in, try to inhale through your mouth or your nose, but make sure they're closed so no air comes in and just keep pulling on the, the sucking or the attempt to inhale while not letting air in. And what you'll feel is the soft palate going up again. So I'm going to do that here real quick. I wonder if you can see how my ears kind of raise a little bit too. You, you might not be able to see that, but you should be able to feel it. So remember to put a lot of focus of the this sucking energy into the center of the lips. You'll find a certain position where when it's done right, the soft palate just goes up really strong and hard, okay? And as you do it, the tongue will want to come up and press up against the roof of the mouth, which is great. That's what you want to do. Similar when you're swallowing, that tongue wants to go up and kind of nice and firm, almost push forward toward the teeth. The same thing when you're sucking here is keep that tongue up and forward at the roof of the mouth. And what you'll also feel, and this we're going to cover this in the next couple of videos, and when I talked about these parts are all kind of related, is when the... When the soft palate goes up, these muscles in the face and the head kind of want to raise up and pull back, which is good. That's what we want them to do. So you want to get that feeling of... Yeah, and you feel, you feel all of that muscle activity and you feel the roof of the mouth, the soft palate moving up and into position and locking in there. So 
what can happen, let me explain a little bit of how this happens when we're singing is that, again, for me especially, I, I like to sing with a lot of strength and a, just a really good tone with a lot of resonation. And so my primary, sort of the center of what I do when I'm making sound is to always have that soft palate raised. So I want all the, all the sound waves that are coming up, I want 100% or as close to 100% as possible to reflect and move forward, to come directly out the mouth or, or sometimes they're gonna pass through a little bit of the tissue and come out the face, but I don't want them going up into the nasal passage. What can happen is if you don't have that active or the soft palate is fully lowered, then you end up with a lot of those sound waves are gonna go on the other side, the back side of the soft palate, and they're gonna go up into the nasal passage. Now there's times when you want, want to do that stylistically, and some people may do that permanently. They may want some kind of blend, because you end up where you have either completely nasal, like when you're humming, 100% nasal. You can be 100% oral, or 100% of the sound coming out the mouth when it's fully raised, or you can be anywhere in between, okay? Um, one of the byproducts of sending some or all of the sound into the nasal passage is that because there's no direct way out, they slam around and they get absorbed. A lot of the sound, the volume, the harmonics are going to get absorbed. So it's one way to really lower the volume. So some people, when they're doing, say, like a decrescendo or lowering the volume, of course, we already know you can affect volume down here where the air pressure meets the vocal folds. But this is another place where at the exact same volume coming off of here, we can lower the volume up here in the resonation chamber simply by sending some of the sound up into the nasal passage. So let's do, going back to the kind of this sucking in thing, let's do um, a quick little, let's make some sound and get a little feeling for the difference. So remember in the last section we did this sound, it's the, starts with the NG of the word sing or any word that ends in NG. Um, mm, mm. So this is interesting because the back of the tongue on the NG makes contact with the soft palate and you can do it with the mouth open or closed, but once that contact is made, no air can come out the mouth. So whether I'm going, mm, 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 or I can open my mouth practically all the way, mm, 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 there's no air coming out the mouth. So what I want you to do is then take that NG sound and then also add the Y-E, or you can do yeah. I sometimes do yeah and sometimes ye, because those are the easiest sounds to make. So add those to the NG sound. And first, don't do anything except make that sound. So get nice and comfortable and go ye, 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 okay, ye. And then what I want you to do now, and you, again, you can pause the video, is take in about a half a breath and then close your mouth, do that, do a nice hard suck for a second or two, and then right at the end of that suck, once you feel internally that soft palate up and locked into place, do the knee right, like instantly right after it. So I'll, I'll do a couple of them here. So I'll do, I'll do the normal knee again, and then I'll do the sucking with the knee. Knee, knee, knee. Ni, 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 ni. Here's the the first way. Ni, 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 ni. No, I forgot to suck. <laughs> ni, ni. So for me, what I'm feeling is that this there's a, a little more strength coming out and a little more tone and character to the sound. And it's because even when I'm doing it normally, most of the sound was coming out the mouth. But when that soft palate is fully raised, it tends to also raise these muscles. It raises the jaw a little bit. And all of those thing com things combine to make the sound just more focused, a little brighter and more resonant. Okay. So now let's quickly, we're, we're going to wrap up here, but let's do a few more exercises to now just get a feeling for 
blending the sound, either fully nasal, fully oral, or somewhere in between. Well, one of the ways we can kind of gauge that, and I do this during my vocal training, because sometimes I don't know for certain if 100% of the sound is coming out my mouth. Because for a while, this is again part of the vocal training, is you've got to train those muscles to be nice and strong and to overcome any... If you habitually keep that soft palate down and speak and sing already with a lot of nasal quality, that might feel normal to you. So you're gonna, and, and those muscles are going to be weaker than they need to be. So what you have to do is develop a new feeling of normal of the soft palate being stronger and raised, as well as through your training, uh, strengthen those muscles so they're, they're doing what you want them to do. So go ahead and make the ni sound with your mouth closed so all the sound is coming out your nose, so a humming. Go, mm, and just notice that while you're humming at 100% nasal, that we're gonna do this and we're gonna pinch and let go, pinch and let go of our nose. And it'll sound like this. Because all the sound stops, right? Because the well, what happens is the air stops, and then these folds can't vibrate anymore, really. Because the air is blocking them from, well, the air is blocking new air from passing the folds, okay? Then... What you want to do with this is, so let's do something here. Instead of the NG sound, um, one nice way when you're training to start uh, making a sound, to move the folds into a vibrating state, uh, that guarantees that the soft palate is raised is to begin things with the letter G. There's a few other letters too, but G is a good one because to make the G, if you go G, G, you'll actually find that the G begins by the soft palate making contact with the back of the throat. So the G closes the soft palate at the start. Now you can lower the soft palate. It can accidentally lower during the vowel portion of the sound you're making, but at least it starts up. So if you go G, 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 and then do that while you're fluttering and pinching your nose, G, if it's coming out 100% out your mouth, you won't hear any change in sound when you pinch your nose. Okay, so now we've got fully nasal, and we've got fully oral, which is now what you want to do is experiment with a blend, is make that gi or sometimes with an n because n the n sound ni it actually ni actually forces the beginning of the sound to be nasal so if you go ni what i have there is sound coming out both the the nasal the nose and the mouth at the same time in some that was about 50 50. so this is something to develop an awareness of and uh, both stylistically and then fundamentally, if your fundamental tone or purpose like me is to have a really strong sound coming out the mouth, then you, you want to train with that soft palate up high. And then you want to develop some stylistic skills to lower it when you want to soften the tone or you want to add some nasal quality uh, to a particular phrase or passage in a song. Okay, so that's about it. So do those four exercises to get the feeling for how to raise it. Apply that to your training, or we'll do that in the second course as well. Um, and remember that the G is a good consonant to use to begin a, con a, a syllable or, or a sustained vowel that guarantees that the soft palate is up at least at the very beginning and then use your fingers on the nose. See, even when I'm speaking now, I can feel there's a little bit of sound coming out the nose because I'm able to, to alter the sound by pinching and letting go. So use that as your little test. Even while you're singing songs, even while you're vocalizing with vocal scales, this is very handy to use uh, to test if some, what portion of the sound might be coming out the nose and entering up into the nasal passage. 
Okay, so that's our section on the soft palate. And now we're going to move into, um, we're going to combine the lips and the tongue into one video. And we'll get to that uh, next.